Hey everyone, welcome to my guide on how to use anchor points in Substance Painter. They're a pretty simple and easy to use tool, but they're very powerful for two main purposes. One is creating layered effects, and the other is to use smart masks with height painted decals. Let's get into those height painted decals and smart masks first, because that's a really useful implementation of the anchor points. So I've created a basic material here. And it's just got a simple colour at the bottom and a metal edge wear looking material at the top, which is giving us this effect around the outside. Now, I'm just going to fill layer in the middle here and add a black mask. And to this, I'm just going to paint on the mesh. I'm just going to paint a bit of a squiggle like that. And this is going to be our height detail. And we'll pop this out just by turning off every layer except height and giving it a bit of out facing height. Now, you're noticing this automatically has not picked up on that metal edge wear, but we want it to. So we're going to use anchor points to achieve this. And what the anchor points really do is they just grab whatever you add an anchor point to and then fill that color or that mask wherever you put the fill for the anchor point, like an input and an output. So we're going to add the input, which is the anchor point, onto the mask for the height detail. And we're going to add the output for this into the micro height section of our generator. Now nothing's happened immediately just because we need to go into micro details and turn on micro height. And now you'll notice we have this edge around the outside. I'm just going to turn up the wear level of the mask a little bit and turn down the contrast just so we can see this metal edge going around the outside of our height. And now the best thing about this is it's live. So I can just go on here and just paint again no problem, it's going to add that metal edge straight on there. But, what if we have another height set above, another fill layer, and maybe this one goes in the way. I'm just going to change it so it overlays the other one by changing linear dodge in the height channel. So that's normal now. And that will fill in. Now you're noticing it's still not acknowledging this one because we're only taking the height from the previous one. It's basically putting this metal edge where, where there isn't any height anymore because it's only taking it from the mask of this previous decal. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this height detail 2. And what we can't actually do is we can't add a mask onto this because only one anchor point can be fed into the edge wear. So I'm just going to create a new layer. And with this set to height up here, what we're going to do is, we're going to have this layer here, and this isn't a fill layer, it's just a regular paint layer. We're going to have this layer pass through, which means it will take all of the height, or all of everything, from the layers below, onto that layer. Now, after we've done that, you can actually see, mousing over there, the height from the previous layer. We're just going to add the, our anchor point onto this actual pass-through layer. Height collector. So we have this anchor now, and we're going to get rid of our previous anchor, which is going to break the um, it's going to break our generator here, and we're just going to plug in our new anchor point, which is on our pass through layer. So this pass through is collecting all of the height data from everything below it, and that's important because this is in a hierarchy. So you've noticed though, we don't have any edge wear here because we need to go into the reference channel on this anchor point now because previously when it was the mask, there's only one color available, so it knew just to take the mask, but now it needs to know. Which one of these colour channels do I take from colour, metal, rough, normal, height? Well, right now it's taking the base colour, we need to tell it to take the height. And now you can see we have this edge damage is all over. All of these new heights are painted and it's correctly responding to the edges of the whole thing because it's taking an encompassing look at all of the height painted below and saying this is where the metal edge wear should be. Now, that's pretty much everything you can do with generators and anchors. But let's have a look at layering our materials. So, let's say we want to make an embossed height detail. Let's add a new fill layer and a black mask, just like we did before. And let's just stamp something into the mask. And I'm just going to bring the height down like we did before and remove the colors. But you can see this doesn't look particularly convincing as if it was stamped into metal, because if you think about it, when something gets stamped into metal, it should be pushed out around the edges as well. I've just changed the texture resident to 4K so I can see it a little bit better. So we're going to add an anchor point 
to the mask again, like we did before. But this time we're going to add a new fill layer above. And then we're going to add a black mask to that. And we're going to take our previous data from this layer here and add a fill layer to this mask. Now we can actually put into a fill layer, we can fill our anchor. So let's fill our anchor into there. And you can see right now, this is just essentially as if they had exactly the same mask. But now the fun begins when we can layer effects up on top of the that fill layer and it will dynamically paint from the other layer too. So let's just add a filter and let's add a high pass filter. And we see right away, this has got the high pass filter applied and we've got a shadow around the edge and we have that white emboss. Let's invert that. And now what we want is just the white edge around the outside. So I'm just going to adjust the levels. And there we go. You can see now we just have this red glow around the outside only. I'm just going to move the layer in a little bit because it seems to be glowing on the entire thing. There we go. Just a small red glow. And if I just change this to a height, make it pop out a little bit, you can see a very subtle but slightly more convincing embossed look. Now, that's pretty much what the two main kind of purposes of these anchor points are. But I implore you to experiment, try more things, and talk about what you can achieve with them with other people because, you know, despite the fact these are the main two purposes, you can see when you're feeding these things into fill layers, you could really put anything on top of them. You can do all kinds of things, layers of skin or layers of damage on a piece of metal. You know, there's a lot of options. There's a smart material I suggest you have a look at here called Hull Damage. That's a nice setup they've made in Substance Painter that comes by default. You can pick apart to see how they've layered up a lot of things on top of anchor points, and it's really worth looking at. It's also important to mention that with generators, you can often fill these micro details or these anchor points into more than just metal edge wear. You can fit them into dirt masks as well, or curvature masks, to be able to apply these kind of effects to any height details you painted on below those smart masks. Anyway, that's just about everything to do with anchor points. Hopefully that helped out, and if it did, maybe subscribe and stick around on the channel, and I'll bring out some more videos covering hopefully useful 3D topics.